What up, everybody? You're now tuned into the true definition of a sports fanatic. I'm your host, Brandon Lampley, and we're going to talk about the Super Bowl today. Um, excuse my voice. You know, I'm, um, I don't know if I, you know, partied or too, turned up too much at a Super Bowl party I went to, which, you know, wasn't really much partying, but voice is going out. But um, I'm here today for you guys. I hope that I got some lozenges uh, somewhere in here. But anyway, um, we're going to get straight into it. Uh, we're going to talk about this Super Bowl. So off top, off top, you have to start with what was probably the biggest story. And it's funny because it had no, almost nothing to do with actual play um, on, almost on the field. What it had to do with was the referees. Man, it, it's hard. It's hard to argue with conspiracy theorists and those who say that the game is rigged, those who say um, that people um, that they they script the NFL. Um, they want certain people to win. They push certain narratives. They push certain things. It's hard to argue with those people after this Super Bowl because, I mean, them wanting to get Brady a ring in Tampa and that that was the whole thing this year was that they want to get Brady a ring because it's good for ratings and all of that. Yeah, I got all of that, and I usually don't listen to stuff like that. But if you watch the game Sunday and seen those egregious calls, uh, you had to look at it like, hmm, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. But we're going to really dive deep into that. Well, not too deep, but no, um, I don't want to be too long. So I'm going to share to a few groups for share to a few groups real quick. So bear with me. Let's see. Okay, so playback is good. I can hear it. Um, so just whatever Jags. So, but these, uh, the man, the refs, man, like if you're going to call it, if you're going to call it, call it both ways, let them play. Um, they, they did this in when the Buccaneers against uh, the Green Bay Packers, they let them play up until I'm talking about like the last play of the game. You have to let the guys play that some of those fouls, man, just phantom calls. And you wonder, and I'm like, yo, yo, you, you got to swallow the whistle, man. You, you have to. But, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And I know the Chiefs. I know the Chiefs faithful. Even the coaches, uh, the players, uh, you name it, It they, they had an issue. They had an issue. And the whole, their gripes and grievances were, um, they were valid. They were valid because it, it's, it's really, really hard. Because one, one thing that Tampa Bay started to figure out, and I'm pretty sure when they went back and watched film, um, the weak points and how they were going to attack the defense, because uh, they had a great plan going in. They knew who they wanted to attack. They knew who they wanted to um, to go after, and they went after them, man. And they got great results going after uh, certain members of that secondary. And the pocket, the and they ran the ball. They ran the ball just well enough. Leonard Fournette has been running hard for a couple of weeks now. Like the kid and he's fresh because he hadn't played much during the regular season. Um, you could tell he finally picked up the playbook and it was only a matter of time before he picked up the playbook. He was going to be the feature back and take over for Ronald Jones. I didn't think it would take this long, but he I mean, he came at the right time and he's part of why that offense has been clicking the way it has. Cause you know, people forget, man, you know, Fournette being here and now to see people talking about him and how he was, whatever, but Fournette was a good player. He was a good player. Now, I believe James Robinson is a better player and going to be a better player as a Jaguar. But Leonard Fournette is a good player. He's a good running back. Um, one of the things he excels at that he didn't get, I don't think he got enough praise for, is his pass protection as a running back. Hands down, he's the best pass blocker as a running back on the team on here in Jacksonville. And the same with um, in Tampa Bay. He's great. He's great at uh, pass blocking. But I know, not only that. He's good at toting the mail at 230-some pounds. Still got the speed to run away from people. The guy can play. He just had a couple of immaturity issues here, um, and they weren't going to sign him long-term and because of those issues, and that's fine. But now hopefully he finds him a home in Tampa Bay, and he's able to continue to grow in Tampa Bay. Um, 
So, but besides Leonard and besides these reps who had a lot of home cooking going on, you literally playing in Tampa Bay. Um, the other one is the, I, watching that Sunday night. It was one of those things where you had to see it to believe it. If I if I didn't watch the Super Bowl and you told me it was thirty one to nine and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers absolutely smothered um, Patrick Mahomes in that offense, I wouldn't have believed it had you had I not seen it. Like all night, um, they pretty much played cover two, and playing cover two got safe, two high safeties. They were able to con- contain Tyreek Hill. Uh, Travis Kelsey ate him up. Uh, underneath as tight ends usually do when you play cover two because he finds a soft soft spot in the zone. It's right in the middle of the field. That's what tight ends eat in cover two. So he was going to do that regardless, and they found creative ways to get him open. But having those two safeties high, those deep shots of Patrick Mahomes just wasn't there. And the only way you can bring um, a running back outside, uh, not a running back, but you bring a, a defense out of cover two is you have to run them out of it. You can't throw them out of it. You got to make them bring their safety down in the box and stop the run. So you get out of here with that home cooking stuff. They were holding every play. You well, you could call that. You call that in every game, Jakar. You can. You call holding on every play in every single game. But it was home cooking. What are you talking about, man? Now the Chiefs, they do, they do hold. They do hold from time to time. Um, and sometimes they get away with it, sometimes they don't. But the Buccaneers were holding against um, Green Bay, and they didn't call it Jakar, so you can go ahead with that. See, Casey shot themselves in the foot. Yeah, they shot themselves in the foot, and it's offensively is where they couldn't get on track. And I, w- I already had already said that Patrick Mahomes' offensive line is not a good line. I had a guy arguing with me at the Super Bowl party. to my, uh, I just looked them up. They said they eighth in the league. I said, yeah, that's when they're fully healthy, and they haven't been fully healthy. They were down two tackles. And dude, he was running for his life. And you got, I seen some of the people talking about Patrick Mahomes exposed. He's not that great. He's not this. Dude, he had no time to throw. And the kids still almost made a bunch of plays. We're talking about drop balls, people, especially the one where he's on the ground. He's literally on the ground. Like he's levitating above the ground almost. His knee is an inch above the ground. He still gets the ball off. It ends up in the hands of a receiver in the end zone, and the receiver drops the ball. If that's any other quarterback, if that's any other quarterback, Tampa Bay smothers him and chokes him out, man. They do. They do. It, I mean, it, it, it's worth it. Like, it's probably 45 to nothing if that's any other quarterback. It, the, the fact that they got nine points is a testament to um, a testament to Patrick Mahomes, his athletic ability, his ability to get the ball out under pressure because he had no time to throw, man. And those other wide receivers, because what you find out is, it's Tyreek Hill and it's Travis Kelsey, and then it's just a bunch of guys. That's it. That's it. That the offense runs through Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Everybody else is is just is just another guy. It's a bunch of guys from the YMCA. It's a bunch of guys from the junior college. They're just the guy. You no, know, so you have to realize that. And that offensive line was not good. Um, and then um casey's defense i didn't think that casey's defense would would collapse like that see pat had two of the most beautiful and complete passes in nfl history the fall and spin to the corner and the throw where he was completely horizontal dude the one where he was completely horizontal that's the one that got me like and it should have been a touchdown if you he they got to get some more receivers in kansas city you know speed is nice but go get you go get you a, another possession receiver to be on the outside because you got to get sure hands, man, and get get guys that can get open, even if they're not that fast. Because these guys couldn't catch a cold. And Tyreek Hill was being shadowed everywhere he went. Everywhere. They did an excellent job shadowing Tyreek Hill and getting pressure with four down linemen. Todd Bowles called a one of the most historic games in Super Bowl history. That's how good that performance was. We're talking about shutting down a historic offense. They only blitzed seven times. That's the least amount of times they had blitzed all year. And they were able to get pressure with four down linemen. The Dominican Sioux looked like Detroit Dominican Sioux. Jason Pierre-Paul looked like he was part of the Giants again. Shaquille Barrett um, looked like an MVP. Um, Devin White, uh, Levante David, Carlton Davis, uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. I mean, these guys played excellent. 
And I picked the Chiefs, but, you know, the Tampa Bay was not hard to uh, root for because seeing Byron call an excellent game, Byron left, which needs a head coaching job. He does. He does. I hope he doesn't get done like Eric Bieniemy has gotten done, which that's still egregious. Um, even with um, wh- how what they had to work with, um, Eric Bieniemy, even after this game, still needs a head coaching job. The same with Byron Leftwich. Byron Leftwich is a great coach, man. And of course, they you make a decision. Oh, oh wait, let me see. Say, is it possible because Tampa Bay's running game was going to shorten the game that the referee threw more flags to extend the commercial timeouts? And see, it stuff like this. This is the stuff I'm talking about. I don't know. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. Just like Jakar talking about uh, the home cooking stuff. No, dude. Everybody had a problem with these these refs, man. Everybody had a problem with the refs. The announcers called out the refs at halftime, man. You had um, Nate Burleson, Phil Sims, all of them. Dude, the refs, you have to let them play, man. You have to let them play. So, yes, you do. Yes, sir. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't think so, and I don't want to believe stuff like that, but it's hard not to. It's hard not to, man, because Tampa Bay I – I said that Tampa Bay has to run the football. Tampa Bay has to run the football, and they have to stop the run on the other side. And that's what they did. They ran the football, and they pretty much stopped the run. They had 58 yards in the first half, but 34 was off of Patrick Mahomes' legs. And Kansas City didn't run the football enough. They should have ran the football more. They should have ran the football probably about 25 to 30 times because in order to uh, pull Tampa Bay out of that – cover two and bring the safety in the box, you have to have success running the football. The way you're going to get your deep shot says anytime you usually see deep shots in the NFL, it's because teams are in single high safety and players get by their um, uh, the DBs because you got single high safety. and uh, But Patrick can manipulate the safeties with his eyes. You can't do that if both safeties are back and they're covering um, a half size of the field, man. So in order to do that, Got to run the football, and they didn't. They just threw and threw and threw. Now, I understand them kind of – they kind of panicked once they got down, but they've always been down. They've always played from behind. So I don't understand them panicking and not continuing to run their offense. But them not running the ball like they should have, maybe they didn't trust the offensive line because even even you could manufacture a running game, even if you can't run the ball, short passes, screens – but on, even on some of those, man, Tampa Bay's front four was absolutely ferocious, man. Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaquille Barrett looked like wide receivers rushing the end. They they look like when you give a defensive lineman uh, like ninety nine speed, like you give it get a you create a defensive end on Madden, and you give him ninety nine speed, and you know how fast he come off the edge. You gonna get twenty five sacks a year um, in franchise mode, and that's what they look like. Soon as the ball is snapped, man, they were in the backfield and on Patrick's lap. You see, what do you think uh, Tyron said to Tom? I want to know that. I will pay folding money to know what Tyron Matthew said to Tom. And I don't know. It it, 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 it was it wasn't motivated just by one thing for Tyron to get in his face. They must have been jawing back and forth from time to time and saying stuff, and it got to a boiling point. Because for him to lose his cool the way he did, him and Tom must have been really, really going back and forth. And Tom is a highly competitive guy. He's one of he's an uber competitor. He like the the greatest competitors in the history of sports. I always believe they have OCD. Tom is like that. So yeah, I do wonder what he said to Tom and what Tom said to him to get him that upset, to get him out of character, and for him to hurt his team like that. I do wonder. So um, but uh besides that, um Man, I just I can't stop marveling at this defense. Oh, can't forget about Antoine Winfield Jr. and him throwing the peace sign up in Tyreek Hill's face because that picture from that first uh, game where he burned them, um, he burned them for 260 yards. There's a picture of Tyreek Hill chunking up the deuces at Antoine Winfield on his way to the end zone, and so Antoine did the exact same thing to him in the Super Bowl on his way to winning a championship. I mean, you can't write stuff like that. Like if, if that's a movie plot. You know, it gets thrown out because it's too, it's, you know, you're just like, no, nah, that stuff like that will never happen. But it happened. So, um, but even with all this said, Tom Brady getting the seventh ring. Um, 
Let's see. And did a backflip in his face. Yeah. 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 That's what I say. Tab was easy to root for, man. Because I, I told you I love Antoine Winfield Jr. Uh, I think the kid is going to have a really good career. But besides, you know, Tom getting his, his seventh ring, I was telling people, I say Tom getting his seventh ring does absolutely nothing, in my opinion, for his legacy to me, because he was already the greatest of all time a uh, couple years ago. Like after the, after the Tampa, after, after he came back against Atlanta, he was the greatest of all time at that point. It, it was forget uh, Montana sport for four, forget um, uh, John Elway back-to-back uh, -back Super Bowls. Uh, forget Terry Bradshaw's four Super Bowls, all of that. No, it's Tom Brady, and he's the man. See, Tampa Bay defense was on him like hot grits on. Oh, on Al Green. Oh, come on, that's that is that that's exactly what it was like. That's exactly he had no time. He had no time. Todd Bowles called. I mean, he called an excellent game. He called a Hall of Fame game. They need to take that footage and put it in the Hall of Fame. And run it, just cut up every defensive snap and run it on the loop somewhere inside the Hall of Fame and say this play, the this uh defensive sequence has been inducted into the Hall of Fame. It was that good. See, I'm so happy for all the former Jaguar players, especially for net. Oh, yeah, I'm I'm happy for Byron, I'm happy uh for Fournette. Um, shoot, even Blaine Gabbert. Although I did have a guy last night. Uh, trying to convince me that Blaine Gabbert was a decent quarterback. I checked out of that conversation pretty quickly. Yeah, we, we, no, no, sir. We do not do that over here. Dude, he tried to say that. I told him Blake Bortles was better than Blaine Gabbert. But anyway, that's going off topic. But, yeah, um, so many people to root for. And then Bruce Arians, just him being a, a, a great coach and him hiring guys that he know could get the job done. You know, not hiring guys based off their, you know, based off their skin color uh, because his, his staff is uh, very diverse. You know. So, hey, Chris, don't laugh at that, man. I was sitting there talking to that guy and I was like, are you crazy, man? Are you serious? I got to check out this conversation. And he was a diehard Jax fan, man. He was diehard. But, um, oh, man, where, where was I at? See, defense played great, but I believe not having tackles was the true story. Yeah, that, and that that's the biggest part of it. That's the that's the biggest part of it. Let's see, but hold on for a second. Yeah, that's the biggest part of it, and um, them not having those tackles was obvious. I told you they those those guys were in his lap early, man, early. As soon as he snapped the ball. He, I've never seen a quarterback run backwards 30 yards and still get the ball off out of bounds. It, craziness. He said he should have known better. Hey, you know, you know, it's, it was an older black dude, you know, and one of those conspiracy dudes because he hit me with the, oh, yeah, every time a, a player leaves Jacksonville, they go off and win the Super Bowl with another team. I said, but that's the league. That's how the league works. You know, ever since free agency came about, guys leave a team and go to another team and they can win titles. Jacksonville is the only place that happens to. I mean, dude, uh, you're talking about and he can only name like four or five players that happen for. And I was like, five players out of 100 years of football doesn't because I don't consider that a trend. It's five players that don't consider a trend. No, it doesn't. It's not a trend, man. Cut that out. I'm so sick of that. dude. I'm sick of hearing that. God. So much so I want to look up Tampa Bay's roster and see how many yeah old school tripping and dude old school tripping I'm like dude players leave teams and go win titles with other teams all the time it's not just the Jaguars you don't have to do time here in order to succeed somewhere else you can do that anywhere man come on and I named the four Cardinals off the bat that left the Cardinals and went to um get playing Super Bowls but he won't listen to that so and win the Super Bowl so, I mean, but it is what it is, man. It's I love talking to old school, uh, the old school cats, man. They'd be funny to me. But um, now, well, I know I talked about Brady and I talked about Bruce Arians and his staff and how, you know, he said he just hired he, hiring um, black coaches and uh, minority coaches and hiring women. It was easy because they were good coaches. You know, he just he hired he hired coaches that were good coaches. That's what he did. Oh man, oh, let me turn this light down, man.
There we go. That's that's a little better because it's like killing me. There we go. Um, but Bruce Arians, is, I, I'm 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 so I'm so thankful for that. See, I don't give them a pass for not having tackles because those same tackles practice every day and get paid. The whole team should have been ready. Oh yeah, I yeah. I mean, it is what it is. If if half the if if, if uh, a bunch of guys that went out with injury, I mean, it is what it is. If Patrick couldn't play, I mean, it is what it is. You know, your best ability is availability. So you know, I do get that. I do get that. See, ex Jags in the Super Bowl only stand out because we Jags fans. And I told him that, Jakari. Thank you. I told him that. I'm like, the only reason people say this is because you're Jaguar fans. You watch the players that you watch go to other teams and win. You're not a fan of another team to watch where players lead the, those teams and go off to win championships. You're not watching like that because you watch the Jaguars. And I tell people that all the time, dude. I'm like, come on, man. Come on. And then when he started talking about Blaine Gabbert being a good quarterback, and he said he don't think Trevor Lawrence is going to be as, as good. I said, dude, it's not even close. We brought up the college stats, 6,000 passing yards for Gabbert and then 10,000 for Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is a can't-miss prospect, man. Blaine Gabbert was not a great quarterback coming out of Missouri. He was middle of the road. He turned out to be a bust. Now, he didn't come to the best team. I will give him that. We ruined him. We did. Because how he could have succeeded, if he could have probably succeeded had we had a better team. But he wasn't good enough to make a team that wasn't that good better. Let's see. Let's see. Blaine Gabbert. Yeah, Ness. Ness, man. I was in stitches. I was like, you got to be kidding me. See, the man on that, uh, Pookie from New Jack. Yeah, he was smoking on Pookie Lope last night. That's what he was doing. <laughs> We did. We did. Whatever shot he had at being good, he dude, go back and look at that team that um Blaine Gabbert came to. That was an awful team. That was an awful team. <laughs> awful, absolutely awful team. That's the only leeway I give him. Other than that, trash. But anyway, now going forward, what's what's on the horizon for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs? Where do you go from here? Um, and for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it's you know, it's the run it back tour, just like the Chiefs did this year. It's the run it back tour, and it's crazy. Patrick Mahomes could potentially have went to three straight Super Bowls, and people talking about the kid getting being exposed, not being that great. But we're gonna get to that. Um, for Tampa Bay, you run it back, they pretty much have enough to where they can, um, pretty much retain majority of the team and bring those guys back. Um, you got some guys to pay, but you can bring it back. And I think the the let's see, ex Raven won last night too. I guess it's a trend. Yes, th thank you, Anthony. Oh my God, yes, I guess it's a trend. Um, if you're Tampa Bay, what you're doing? Let's see. Super proud of you. Hey, I appreciate that, Dwight. Man, I appreciate that so much. I love you guys, man. I love all the support. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. See, Tampa Bay should repeat easily. Yeah, I, I was getting to that, Ness. Um, their, the, their biggest issue going forward for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, this is the biggest issue. This is the biggest hurdle. And once you see that he's good, then I will have really no and injuries, of course. And, you know, of course, the, the bug. Uh, Tom Brady. Tom Brady is a bit of a question mark going forward. And the only reason I say that, and it's not because he can't play, he's not good enough to win. You see that he can still play. He is good enough to win, yes. But – the cliff is coming. He's going to fall off a cliff at some point. Is it going to be before he retires? Who knows? But at some point, the drop off in his game is coming. It happens to old quarterbacks. It's happened to all of them. It's coming. See, the man played with two backup tackles, got turf toe. He got exposed. People say anything. Yeah, Anthony, people do say anything. They do. They do. They absolutely do say anything, man. The kid is great, man. Say, if you the Jags GM, would you pay Shaq Barrett top money or try to budget him? Um, I pay him top money. I said this. Um, I was talking to uh, my little cousin and um and my, my my homeboy Chris. I said, pay, pay Shaq Barrett and pay Leonard Williams, and you change the face of the defense like that, like that, like that. Leonard Williams and Shaquille Barrett changes the entire face of your defense if you're Jacksonville. Yeah, Jakar. See, NFL football, the hardest sport to repeat. 
So I don't think it will be easy. No, Anthony, it won't be easy. That's why I say their biggest question mark is Tom Brady and, of course, staying healthy. Um, And hopefully, you know, he's able to continue to play well. But the cliff is coming, man. The cliff is coming. It happens. And, you know, and I would hate to see it because I believe he's the greatest. And, you know, I just hope to continue to see him succeed, you know, because I am, you know, I have a, a, a deep respect for him and Belichick. Because, dude, they, 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 there's nobody better. There's nobody better. You can make an argument he's the greatest player to ever play. You know, he's that good. Um, But, yeah, Tampa Bay, run it back. And your question mark is Brady going forward and how he's going to progress throughout the season. Um, For Kansas City, rebuild that offensive line. Um, Hopefully you can get um the, the lineman that's in Canada. Hopefully he opts back in and he comes back. Um, hopefully you can get uh, Damian Williams back. And you got to figure out defensively. You got to figure it out. You have to. Um, you got to got to figure out a way to get more pressure. And those DBs, those DBs for Kansas City, what twenty one and uh, number twenty one, and I think uh, number thirty eight, the barbecue chicken. Oh my god! Oh my god! Tampa Bay figured it out early. They were barbecue chicken, man. Brady's leadership shine bright. No question. No question. He's one of the greatest leaders. That's why um, Edelman said that the Patriot way is not the Patriots. It's Tom Brady. Tom Brady is the Patriot way. Yeah, because without Tom Brady, the Patriot way doesn't work. I mean, because everybody has to fall in lockstep behind the greatest player, the greatest quarterback, the GOAT all-timer. You have to. You can't go against the grain. See, Shaq has proved he's worth 20 mil. We ain't paying Judon so y'all can get him. <laughs> Y'all ain't paying Judah. Why y'all not paying Judon? How much Judon want? Because Judon can play. Yeah, let me know how much Judon want. See, and just think AB is still learning this offense and where he fit in. Brady is a Razors. Razors never, never go completely dull. Brady's knows what evolution is and he will evolve or walk away. And I said that, Ness. I said that. I, I And I don't know about him walking away. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm afraid that he might not. But he said he can play the 45. Hopefully he can do that. Um, because even as his arm strength um, deteriorates and it's going to do it year by year, um, you, there you tell your game around that. See barbecue chicken. Yeah, Chris. Oh yeah. Barbecue. Chicken. Those guys are awful, man. Those guys are Kansas city. Got to figure it out. You got to go get some more DBs, man. Tyron Matthew is their best DB hands down. See Freddie 10 interview. Um, said he wasn't listening to a coach. He was listening to uh, Brady. Oh, Oh, yeah. Yeah. You listen to Brady. Uh, Ocho Cinco talked about it. He said um, if if Belichick goes off on Brady, he did. He he's he goes off on Brady. They watch a film and he went off on Brady. And this was the first meeting back. They were all fresh off the Super Bowl and they were watching film. And Belichick was laying into Brady, you know, about being better, about mistakes he made. And Brady sat there and took it. And he said, set the tone and he let him know, say, hey, if he talks to Brady like this, Yo behind better stay in line. And so he's like, you like walking on eggshells there. He said he wants 20 mil and he ain't worth it. Trust me. Ooh, I didn't know that he was um asking about that, Anthony. Yeah, y'all not paying him. Y'all not paying him. Y'all gonna let him go. He's gonna get his money though. Somebody gonna pay him. He's gonna get his money, but yeah, he's not gonna get that money. I'll be surprised if Baltimore gives Judon 20 million dollars. I'll be man, I'd be really surprised at that if he gives him 20 million dollars. Um but um, hey, where was I? What was I talking about? Oh, talking about Brady. Um, also, um, with the Chiefs, besides you know figuring out that pass rush, uh, getting another pass rusher in there, um, more DBs, uh, shore up those linebackers. Like they really got to work out that defense and just that offensive line, and get Patrick Mahomes a possession receiver. I understand they love speed. I understand you love speed. But the, those guys are fast with questionable hands. Pringle, Robinson, Watkins, they're, they're just guys, man, who are fast, who can catch a ball from time to time. You know, good for screens, you know, good for reverses, good for returns, but consistently catching the football, no, no, that's not what they are. So you need to go get you, you – do get if you can give an Anquan Bolden to Patrick Mahomes, ugh, that'd be nasty, man. That'd be nasty. But all in all, man, it was a 
it was it was an okay Super Bowl. So last year's Super Bowl was better, of course, because it was closer. Um, oh, the halftime show. I almost forgot about the halftime show. So I don't know about y'all, but I enjoyed the halftime show. I did because I like the weekend as an artist. And I must say this about my um, extended church family and my church people. Um, I seen some things about them saying that the performance was demonic or something like that. It, it, dude, everything isn't demonic, people. Come on, man. Come on. I understand, you know, you know, you, you're holier than thou and all of that, but everything isn't demonic. You know, it, you know, hey, it, it ain't this ain't the temptation where everybody sing with mom, one mic to my shoe, shoe up and going back and forth and all of that. Come on, man. See, what about Tampa Bay coaches being all black and one female stuff? I talked about that, Michael. Um, I talked about that. I said, you know, um, give Bruce Aries a lot of credit because he talked about it and how easy that is to do. He basically told him, he said, these guys are not trying. It's easy to do. He said, I hired these guys because they're good coaches, not because they're black. Staying with the ladies. I hired them because they're good. They're good coaches, not because they're women. See, Brady won't decline because he takes what the defense gives him. He rarely play hero ball. Look at those key third downs on Dink and Dunk to the running back or slot. Yeah. And it's not only about his arm either. It's not only about his arm. It's about him taking hits as well, which you don't take many. But remember, you got to remember Brett Favre's last hit when um, in Buffalo. He got knocked out, and that was the end of his career. See, oh, Vaughn said stop it. <laughs> All right, I won't go in on the Saints. I'll stop. See, they give the Illuminati too much credit. Thank you. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, Ma. But Anthony said, they, come on. It ain't a conspiracy. Golly. See, uh, Lenny was the key player in the Super Bowl. Yeah, 89 yards and a touchdown. And uh, he looked like 2017 for net for the last couple of weeks. I mean, he the kid has been running hard, man. And he learned a, he learned a lesson. I could see the maturation in him, man. I wish we had got him now. Because I think he'd be a great player going forward, especially if he can stay healthy. But I mean, come on, people. He was young. He was really, really young. We got a we got him at 21 years old, man. He was a baby. You see? But that's because Brett holds the ball too long. Brady ain't holding like Brett. Brett did hold the ball a lot and tried, I mean, just tried absolutely retarded throws. He did. He he but he had the arm strength, so he played YOLO ball. He really did. Uh, but we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But um, no commercials really stood out to me. I don't know if you guys pay attention to any commercials, but no commercials really stood out. I always love the Budweiser commercial, but a lot of the ones who make good commercials opted out in July. And I didn't know that until about a month ago. So you didn't have really memorable commercials or whatever. But um, all in all, you know, it was OK. Um, too many flags. Um, the, the NFL doesn't feature the reps. Point blank, period. They don't feature the reps. So the reps should never be center stage at any point in any game shaggy commercial is fine yeah now i do remember the shaggy commercial anthony i do i do remember the shaggy commercial is he brother anthony anderson wants hilarious i didn't see that one if you if you um if you find it on youtube jacar send it to me i didn't see that one see only commercial was good was the shaggy one yeah uh anthony just said that the anthony the um the uh shaggy commercial was the best one Let's see, EV car commercial was stellar. I didn't see that one either. Let's see, does that wig come with the chin strap? Yeah, I did. I saw that one. I saw that one. See, Lenny growth this year was beautiful to see. Yeah, it was. It was because Leonard had to humble himself. I mean, he no matter what he says, he didn't want to be cut by the Jaguars. He would want to have stayed here and got paid and be a Jaguar. He, I'm pretty sure he did not want to get cut. And for the way they cut it was so sudden. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that, you know, he might have some inklings about it. But I mean, for the how they did it, it was very sudden. And I'm sure it humbled him to go and have to sit behind Ronald Jones and learn the offense and to just be a role player for majority of the season and have to sit back and learn is a humbling experience. And, you know, he didn't pout. He didn't um, he didn't go into a tank, go into the tank. You know, he learned the offense. He was a model citizen. He stayed out of trouble. He kept his nose clean. And only he came out on the other side of it playing great football. And I hope that continues for him in the future. But, oh, 35 minutes. Man, I didn't mean to go this long. But, man, I appreciate you guys. 
and ladies for tuning in because my mom reminded me that there are ladies who watch me and yes there are ladies who watch me so i appreciate all the ladies i know you guys don't really comment like that but you know don't be afraid don't be afraid throw your two cents in i can work with just about anything as you can see you know it doesn't matter um but uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, and subscribe. Remember, follow me on all of my social media accounts going across the bottom right here. Um, I'm, I'm getting a little bit of a following on TikTok, and I'm going to start putting some other content on TikTok. Yeah. Shout out to moms. Hey, hey, moms, man. Moms, man. Yeah, shout out to moms. One of my, that's probably my biggest supporter, moms. But uh, shout out to her. Uh, shout out to all my people, man. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for the support. Um, uh, I got some more content coming up, of course. Um, uh, about to switch it up and start putting out more stuff. Um, definitely talk about relationships and different things like that. Um, oh, hold on a second. But man, um, I'll talk to you guys later. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and subscribe. Of course, subscribe to the YouTube. Trying to get to a thousand. I'm currently sitting at like thirty something after I started it. Um, but it's growing, but growing very slowly and I'm growing on other platforms, but I appreciate you guys for sharing me. I love you guys, but I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Let's see, oh, yeah, bro. Peace.